was that? Oh, great. It's no pressure. No. <laughs> well. That's all Where do you want me to? Where's mine? Oh, I do apologise. Sorry. Just to introduce myself a bit further, um, people know what an admiral nurse is? People heard of an admiral nurse? No. Oh, how sad. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Macmillan nurses? Yes. yes. Uh, admiral nurses are a sort of a similar approach to a disease specific group, and we're obviously um, um, specialist nurses in dementia care. And we've been going about 20 years, whereas uh, Macmillan's been going about since 1949, something like that. So there's a, a, a small but growing number of us across the country. Um, I started off as a consultant Admiral Nurse in North London in the mid-2000s and then became Director of Admiral Nursing with a passion for not just dementia care but for making a difference to Admiral Nurses in terms of their practice development and professional development. Um, I'm not quite sure how I got to hear about Pebble Pad, but I've always been very keen um, on portfolio development. I was one of the probably very early adopters and worked with the Nursing Times to develop their um, uh, marketable portfolio document back in the 1980s. I've been around a long time. Um, so very conscious that you know we do need to get the nurses much more involved in their portfolio development so pebble pads sort of come in on part of that journey and I'll, I'll just, just explain a bit of it i'm still quite surprised i'm here really being a new customer for pebble pad i think you want us to showcase what we're doing you know we're not doing anything yet and i nearly did go into the royal horticultural uh, talk in the other room <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bit more interesting <laughs> So she said, Debbie said, present a case study. So, okay, um, I've just adapted some slides which, which I've used to sell Pebble Pad to, to our Admiral Nurses. Um, one of the difficulties we've had with Admiral Nurses is to get them engaged in developing their portfolios to um, demonstrate their level of expertise and, and their advanced practice. But in a way, several things have come together to help me to do that more um, cleverly and succinctly. NMC revalidation, um, the, the notion of what is specialist practice, and the fact it's a very competitive world out there. And I'll explain some of these things. You probably, a lot of you I notice from the delegate list are from academic institutions, higher education institutions, so you're very interested in um, those that are in the nursing field with revalidation. Now it's hit a lot of other professions as well and certainly the medical colleagues amongst us um, have been involved in revalidation for a little bit longer. We, we've had um, a sort of a, a, a re-registration <coughs> process with the Nursing and Midwifery Council for some time, but that's all changing now, and, we, and there are three pilot sites across the country that are looking at that in, in more depth. So traditionally what a nurse would do is every three years they just sign a declaration, say, yeah, I'm up to date with my CPD, yeah, I've done so many hours practice, um, and I don't know of one person that's been audited in that process. I understand there have been people that have been audited, but it is much more of a reality now that nurses will have to demonstrate in a very tangible way how they've kept up. They've got to demonstrate a minimum number of working hours. They've got to demonstrate CPD. Um, they've got to actually look at 360 degree review now, not just from their from uh, what they say they're doing, but from their peers, from their managers, from their patients, from their carers, so to actually indicate their level of abilities and competence. Um, and they've got to, a manager now will have to sign them off. So if, if you make a, a false declaration of somebody that, that's actually signing, then you're, you're culpable in that um, situation as well. Um, and obviously, you know, it, we have to declare that we've got cover for indem indemnity. But where does Pebble Pad come in on that? Now, one of the things that I wanted to do is to make sure that our nurses do not have the burden of duplication. We have appraisal processes, we have portfolio processes, we have revalidation processes. Nurses are very hard pressed for time. What time they do have, they really do want to put in face-to-face -face contact with their clinical, um, with their, the people they're working with. 
So if I can make their life a little easier in terms of their professional and practice development, PebblePad has to help with that. Because one of the things that PebblePad are helping us to do is to make sure that it fits all of those bills. It helps with revalidation, it helps with their continuing professional development, and I'll go on to talk about what we're doing with that. But it also helps with their appraisal and with revalidation. But one of the big issues for, for us is actually um, demonstrating our level of expertise. Now, we have a competency framework, which um, I'm in the process of refreshing. It's been around since 2004, but it's been really difficult to get to engage the nurses within that because it was a paper exercise. It was a huge tome that would make a fantastic doorstop, but was very difficult to, to engage them in and to actually work them through how to use it. But it's very important that we do engage them in specialist practice because dementia care is a really competitive world and if a commissioner would want um, the cheapest option, which is a dementia care advisor, what difference is a dementia care advisor compared to a dementia specialist nurse? And I think we have to be in the game of actually evidencing what we do. So I think that once we've got the competency framework refreshed and uploaded, that will go in the central atlas in the form of a workbook and we'll forerun that with um, a, a promotional um, and motivating DVD from our chief executive. She's sort of a bit uh, cautious about that at the moment because she's like me, she's got a, a radio face. But nevertheless, I think that we, we do have to personalise that. And at the moment we're working on putting other assets within the workbook for nurses to use, so reflective frameworks, um, um, learning models, all, all sorts of different paperwork, but the, the core element will be the competency framework. Um, now, in other countries in, in the UK, particularly <coughs> Wales and Scotland, the, the, the uh, governments have sort of jumped off the fence and made declarations about what constitutes specialist practice in nursing. Um, and, and indicated that that's probably master's level. Now, a lot of our nurses are traditionally trained or, or they've got diplomas and so are a long way off having a master's degree, but nevertheless, experientially, they're actually functioning way above that level. So PebblePad will help us to use the competency framework effectively to generate evidence that we can then accredit in partnership with an academic institution to actually show that that, that um, experience, that practice, that level of functioning actually does hit, hit that particular level. Um, and I think that together in, in partnership, PebblePad will help us create a strong future and clarity for the role of Admiral Nursing. As I said, it's a competitive world, and if we're to actually position ourselves really well to show the evidence, to demonstrate the evidence for our practice, then all of, all of that will, will come together. So, we actually, I, I don't believe that you can deliver person-centered care to families affected by dementia unless we actually treat our staff, our nurses, in a person-centered way. So, because we value their contribution, we've made a gift to Admiral Nurses. Now, in some um, organizations, uh, I understand that there's, there's a sort of a small charge for an Admiral, uh, a competency frame, a pebble pad license, but um, then that doesn't assure that people buy into it. So we're actually making a personal gift of pebble pad, not just to the Admiral Nurses, um, but we value all of our employees. So all of the Dementia UK back office staff, the fundraising, the communications, will all get a pebble pad license to support them in their development and in their appraisal processes. Not just them though, um, our board of trustees will all get a pebble pad license. So we will be, there won't be anywhere that's a pebble pad free zone. But from a seed of an idea, um, I think that is perhaps what I can help you, well, reflect with you, is that uh, it's probably about a year ago that I sort of started sniffing around the e-portfolio scene. Um, and th there are cheaper options on the market, but there's, they just don't compare with Pebble Pad and they don't compare with the flexibility that it offers and also the, um, the use that it has within academic institutions. One of the things that we've developed um, in partnership with academic institutions, for example, is 
a module at master's level that it's, it includes pebble pad familiarization and pebble pad use. It, it familiarizes the nurse with the competency framework and it actually engages them in reflective practice. And one of the actual outcomes for that module is demonstrating through pebble pad um, your use and, and um, adoption of a reflective framework and then linking it to various assets. And certainly one of the the nurses who's quite a tall poppy at the moment in that field worked with Debbie to do a presentation to the rest of her peers um, and it, it's, it's blown the minds away of nurses and they, they really see the creativity and the lack of duplication even within our competency framework because paper, in the paper version people had to use um, replicate different bits of evidence depending which of the domains it fitted in within the competency framework but the cleverness of technology in the pebble pad means that you can just actually link some of those. A simple process of linking rather than the huge process that was gone through before. We developed a project initiation plan and, and I'm all for simple. Um, we batted that backwards and forwards with Debbie and I've allocated somebody to, to lead on that. But um, we, I just like simple and a Gantt chart with a few brief explanations on it does it for me. And, it's enabled us, and Debbie's enabled us, to actually meet all, all of our time goals within, a, within appropriate length of time. Now what we're doing is we're, got, we're walking slowly with Admiral Nurses. We're using this first year for them to play with Pebble Pad. We have monthly um, clinical supervision and practice development workshops around the country. Um, we've got about 12 in all. So peripatetically, we will go out to each of those practice development groups and actually give them hands-on experience using PebblePad. One of the benefits to the competency framework module is that as we accrue the numbers of nurses that go through that, they will become the super users, if you like, in each of their regional groups and actually support Admiral nurses to get their heads around the software, but also to get them to creatively think about how they might use it. Some of those nurses have also joined a steering group, and on that steering group we've got other members um, of the charity. So needless to say, we've got the IT guys, we've got Debbie, we've got some of these nurses that uh, have a, a developed a confidence in using PebblePad and can actually help us to steer that. Because once the year of familiarisation is over, then we will have the competency <coughs> framework uploaded, and that's when they really get to grips with using it. So they can play with it. As I said, we've been inclusive. If we're giving this gift, I believe that the gift should extend to all of the people that work with or for the charity. We had a launch event which Debbie came along to and we, we gave the gift um, and we talked about what Pebble Pad is and then um, our Admiral Nurse worked with Debbie to show actually how that can be used and how it can actually relate to clinical work. Well, I, I, just before I stood up, I was reading the feedback from that um, event where we had over 100 Admiral nurses at, and the level of excitement and anticipation and pleasure at having this gift and this opportunity was quite overwhelming. A handful, not even a handful of negative comments, if you perceive them negative, was angst. Nurses do tend to be a bit anxious about... Um, demonstrating how good they are. Um, some people just don't, it doesn't fit very well with them. But what I like is that this pebble pad, along with the competency framework, almost is like a potential boulder to start rolling, because once it starts rolling, nurses do see the value in that. Um, and growth. We're a growing number of nurses. O over this next month, we're increasing um, probably by 20% uh, uh, as interest with commissioners grows. And very soon, I, I see that we'll be certainly on the next um, size licensed pebble pad, if you like. So, thank you, and happy to take any questions. I think I've done well in time, so you're thank probably you. well in time for your Australian uh, <laughs> Skype session. And I'm happy to. If there are any questions, we've got time while we set up the Skype. Can I just ask which um, university you delivered the um, module? We've um, our first dip of the toe. We, we're not. We don't want to be exclusive to any one particular one. But we we're actually with the Association of Dementia Studies at Worcester University. Um, I'm in negotiation with Bradford University, um, but I'm open to uh, negotiations with any really that have a, a, a suitable approach. Yeah. 
a lot of universities, I understand, deliver a, a module on um, demonstrating advanced practice. So it's not that we're omnipotent and want a, a module just for admiral nursing. Some of our admiral nurses will be quite happy to go on more generic courses. They just port with them their own competency framework and their own pebble pad. So that's only been going um, probably about 10 months and we're just about to evaluate it. So we're sort of open to negotiation with any. We wouldn't want to put our eggs all in one basket. Have you had any uh, problems with um, your nurses uh, complaining about lack of time to use? And, and, and how, are you, you know, I, th I think that's perennial. Um, and I think that what one thing that we do do in valuing admiral nurses <coughs> is that when we establish a contract with any host organisation, we mandate that part of that will be their sign-up to those nurses having this one day a, a month dedicated to su clinical supervision and, and practice development. Um, and this sort of pebble pad um, and competency framework completion is very much part of that. So as um, it's quite a robust clinical supervision method and a lot of, a lot of practitioners, especially nurses, actually give up that time when clinical pressures become um, overwhelming, um, whereas other colleagues of disciplines such as doctors or occupational therapists, for example, ring fence that time. We try to encourage our nurses to do the same. Uh, the host organisations have ring fenced it or agreed to that, so we encourage them to do that. So part of the process would be clinical supervision raises it through reflections and case presentations practice issues whether that be positive outcomes or things they need to learn more about, then that is transferred into the practice development session, so where they can actually um, use their reflections and, and practice issues in developing learning needs. It's not that you have a clinical supervision and then the learning needs met that afternoon. Sometimes it's a bit of a rolling, a rolling programme. But the space they have in the afternoon will um, enable them to, to use Pebble Pad and the competency framework to actually pick a little bit further on what skills and knowledge they have, but what are their action plans for the future, if you like. So we try to encourage that, um, and now with the beauty of Pebble Pad is that even going from a visit, we've encouraged people to do, use um, recorder dictaphones so that they can digitally upload their reflections and then progress from there um, and actually tease it out. But the, the sort of post note type um, um, tool within PebblePad works really well to actually capture the essence of what, what you want and then explore it later in clinical supervision or um, indeed with um, a system that we've incorporated as well of critical companionship. So the, the beauty of PebblePad is that I, I've got several people that I'm a mentor or cr critical companion to, but it warrants either a phone call or a face-to-face -face meeting. But now through PebblePad, we can e actually exchange in a, um, a remote way, but it, with a more mm. effective level of communication. <coughs> um, I With the course? Yeah. Um, did you have to transfer some of the paper-based templates online, for example? Actually, they, uh, the university did it for us. We, the uh, second machination of the competency framework is what's uploaded at the moment. But it, it, it's very... Um, well, it's dated. That's why we put a tender out to universities to refresh it. But it's um, very functional-looking, and I like the creativity that PebblePad offers in making it look really really fancy but really it took us about six months to negotiate the because they had to apply to the whatever you do in terms of when you create a new module mm -hmm. to make sure it was at the right level and the right number of credits and things it took us about six months Thank you very much.